Hey guys, uh, mail call video here. Uh, first, a little quick announcement. In a few days, June 1st, we'll start the Lather Games. And the first day is a floral or spring scent. A market, a, a specific, uh, a, a scent that is specifically marketed toward uh, the springtime uh, or is predominantly floral or grassy, that sort of thing. And you can go to Wet Shaving subreddit on uh, on Reddit if you want more details there and find the thread about the lather games there. Uh, but that is uh, the first day, the first theme. So if you've got a floral soap that you like to use, you can jump in and get some points for that day if you want to play the games. And um, I, but on for the one with the mail call, man, this was a relief of a mail call because some of this stuff the confirmation notes that I had gotten from the people sending it to me said that it arrived two weeks ago and I still wasn't seeing it as of a few days ago in my, in my PO box. And so finally, it seems like the post office got staffed enough to where they were able to handle it. Right. And so let's go over. We've got mostly hardware. It looks like this time. And we'll start with this, stuff in my right hand. Now this is a Gibbs Model 13. I'll unwrap it here in just a second. Uh, it's a, a, I, I'm a big fan of the Gibbs razors. Looking forward to trying that one out. We have, the, uh, we have a timeless, let's do a quick run through of everything. We have a timeless, it's a titanium razor with an extra head. We've got a sterling razor. Yes, it's the handle that I wanted. We have two gem razors sent to me by HD Shaves. And one of these, he just threw in just for grins. This one right here, I'm pretty certain. And uh, this one was the one that I, I bought from him and he gave me a nice price for it. And he sent, he had another one sitting around and said, hey, why don't you try this guy out? Man, he's a great guy. Um, FCS Notorious. FCS is a soap company. I can't remember what it stands for. First Line Shave makes Del Mar Boulevard. These two samples, plus, plus this decant right here from Chatillon Lux, Admiral. It's the cologne of Admiral. And holy cow, uh, it was, it had apparently leaked a little bit out uh, despite him tightening it down nicely and securing it with electrical tape. That's what I do as well. Um, it still leaked a little bit out. And so the, the whole package, I can even smell it on my hands because I was rubbing that bubble wrap all over me, you know. Oh, such a good scent. It's, I love it as a soap and this is proof that I love it as a cologne as well. And that and those two soap samples were provided by Refined Shave. Uh, complimentary, what a great guy he is as well. Um, and then I believe the rest are just blades and I've got this 100 Kai blades. Pretty cool. And I also have 100 Gillette Silver Blues and 100 Nassets. I'll be interested to see, um, you know, because they, I, got, I just got a great deal on these blades. And so even though I've got tons of blades already, um, I, I just couldn't help but snatch them up. And sometimes that's good. Like, for instance, we've got that Astra situation right now where uh, the new ones now are laser etched and the old ones were printed on. I've had such a great experience with the printed on blades because I use them so slowly that I'm, I'm still not through my stock of the printed on blades. I did start using one of the laser etched blades and it hasn't been as good. Now, maybe that's because of the razors I'm trying it on. So I'm not going to pass any judgment yet, but what if the grind of the blade did change with the change of the laser etching. What if it's different now? And what if it's no longer a blade that works so well across my different razors, right? Who knows? So maybe I'll be glad that I snatched up a large collection of the other blades, you know, instead of buying them as I need them, which sometimes still seems insane. Um, and now the Perma Sharps here and the Kai blades, you know where I got those? got this from walmart.com. Now, in case you don't know, when you buy a hundred, sometimes you get it in this display pack. There's a, I think it's called the saloon pack. I'm not sure though. 
there's a, it's meant to be a display to be hung in a store. You got the tabs up here with the holes and then through the back, the little tab goes in to hold each little tuck in place. And I was glad to see when I opened this up that these were the supers because those were the ones I wanted to try. And the Permasharp, and then it says super. There are some Permasharp stainless. So this is what the saloon pack looks like. If you're ever curious, and sometimes you might order some and, and they'll come in a hundred pack like this. So I'm looking forward to trying those out. I, I think I've tried out a Permasharp super, but it may have been just the stainless that I tried out. And that came from, uh, so if you're looking for blades in a hundred pack, I always check maggard razors. I always check um, uh, Italian Barber will sometimes have a great deal on Nassets, for instance, and a couple other different types. Uh, I always look at eBay, and as long as the seller has very good, uh, a good, very good rating, then I do not hesitate from buying eBay. I do. That's a choice that I, I'm fine with that. Uh, you can, and Amazon is sometimes a great one, but you have to shop carefully on both eBay and Amazon because you can get overcharged. And also, it looks like Walmart.com. It doesn't have a huge selection of DE blades, but it has quite a few. Uh, and they're good ones. And I mean, it's got some good ones there, not just a bunch of kind of half good ones. All right. Now, uh, I told you I was going through just quickly, but I guess I lied, right? I guess I was mistaken about what would happen as I went through these things. I just can't help it, right? Uh, the other Sterling razor that I have brought to you and showed you in another recent mail call had the burgundy color. This is the caramel, I guess, the brownish color um, bag or case. Case, it's a case. And so he did throw in a complimentary tuck of blades. Here is why I bought this razor for that handle. I have a feeling I'll be able to sell this head because this, this is the high aggression head. The normal standard head is plenty aggressive for me. Just like Rod predicted. I didn't walk in blindly. I read what Rod of Sterling wrote. And so I knew that it would be aggressive, even the standard. Uh, but I bought it anyway because I found a great deal on it used. And kind of the same deal here, but I realized before, right before I made this purchase, I read online that I, I don't think, it, it seemed to indicate that Rod wasn't really going to be offering any more of these razors once they sold out. Now, I don't know, know if that was hearsay or what, but I thought, hmm, maybe I better get one of these handles because when I went and looked on the website, these handles were sold out. Um, and so I, I don't know if it's true or not, but I went ahead and pulled the trigger uh, because uh, I thought that I, I liked it. I do have the Dallas, uh, the Austin handle, which has the knurling all the way halfway up. And then it's all lean, kind of like right here, but it's all up here. It's off balance for me. It doesn't quite look right. It doesn't quite shave right because where I grip it needs to have the knurling. And that's not the case with the Austin handle. I believe this, is, this one's called the Dallas and it's got the knurling right up here. There is, I think, another one called the Fort Worth. It has knurling up here, but then this knurling area down here is smaller, and I like the look of this one better. Uh, and this is not a handle that jumps out to me as I look at it in person as I really like the looks of that handle. Aesthetically, it, it might take some getting used to. However, the grip, uh, the I think the balance, I think the, the, the way I hold it as I shave because of this knurling here, I wish it would have been maybe just a little bigger so that that second finger could grab there too. But I think it's going to be sufficient to have these. I may try the high aggression head because I'm a glutton for punishment, but I may not. Who am I kidding? I've got to try it once, right? Um, and anyway, so this is the, and so what I'm likely to do is take that Austin handle, swap it out for this one, and use my standard head on this handle. And that might be the Sterling razor that I end up keeping. Of course, if these razors truly do sell out and are never available again, I might be tempted to keep even that Austin handle that I, I'm not really that fond of. 
because after all tastes change and the, the knurling design that he picked out for, for these handles, I just, I think it's wonderful. I think it's great. So that is the Sterling Stainless Steel DE Razor. Now the, the timeless that I have, and I'm going to put this 13 down here so I don't forget about it. So this is how the box that Timeless sends their razors out in. And they leave room in the foam for a stand and an extra plate or two. Uh, what's this down here? I'm not sure. Maybe a tuck of blades. I'm not really sure. This, I can immediately notice the weight difference with this titanium version and that is why I bought this razor again this is a used model and I, I would not have bought it new it's really expensive um, but I, I really enjoy the timeless and so I thought you know maybe that would be a reason to buy the titanium reason number one the the stainless steel version of the timeless is, is kind of heavy and so what if this one could then replace the stainless steel version and so for just a little bit extra money, I've got one that I like even better. The second reason I bought this one is the smooth safety bar. All my other safety bars are scalloped. And at first I liked the scalloped look, but I always wanted to try. And then eventually I grew to really enjoy the smooth look. And so that's the second reason it attracted me because of the smooth. The Notation here on the side, it does say Titanium 95, so this is the uh, more, uh, I would say it's kind of more of a medium aggression. I wouldn't say it's a high aggression gap. Let's unscrew the, oh man, the weight on this is just fantastically light compared to the stainless version. And then, now notice that the time, the titanium versions the base plates are smaller they have a, a slimmer profile indeed I wonder if these match the slim profile of the stainless one too and I've heard that that makes it a little bit more aggressive so I'm curious about that so I just love their design nothing printed on the bottom and really the only thing right here is on the end, just like with the 60, with the 95, it says TI-68. Just the lightness, and you know it's so firm and hard uh, structurally. You know it's significant, it's not gonna break if you drop it, and so it has a very interesting feeling being so light like that. And so there we go, there's the 68. Really looking forward to trying this guy out. So got a used deal on that, um, and the parts are interchangeable. I could get my stainless head and put it on this timeless uh, titanium handle if I wanted. Vice versa, I could put this titanium head on my stainless handle. You can play around with them a little bit uh, with the timeless system. But I, I do love the look of the smooth bar. The website for Timeless does say that the smooth bar has, is a little bit more mild and smooth than the scalloped bar, but I'll bet it would be hard to tell the difference. That's, that's my gamble. That's my instinct because I just don't think it would change it too much, uh, but it might be fun to try it out and see. Of course, it's, a slight, it's not the same geometry of head, so you really can't compare the two. I'd have to find the slim version of the stainless to be able to tell. All right, the last item to cover in more detail um, is this, and this was marketed as a new inbox. Now listen, if you are interested in this razor, as far as I know, as of a couple of days ago, it's still available on eBay. I watched it for months, and it's coming from Macau. If you look for Gibbs Razor, and then look for the number 13. And if, if, if it's from Macau, then it is the likely the same one. And last time I checked, it said there was only one more. And it was expensive, it, more so than a, 
you know, like a Gillette Super Speed or something like that, but it's cheaper than a Timeless or a Carve or anything like that. And this is a piece of history. And also, these it, it's marketed as new old stock. And it sure kind of looks like it was. And it looks like I think there's one more on the website. If it hasn't been sold out already, it comes, and these are this is plastic wrapped, so these are brand new. And that's what the, I may have to do another detailed video showing this. Um, and so we've got tape that is, so I am going to be, I guess, the first human being to unwrap uh, this particular razor. I got a pair of scissors and I cut up there so that you wouldn't have to watch me pick at the, the tape. You know, this, you know what this handle reminds me of? I don't know about you guys, but when I was in elementary school in the 70s, there was a pen that had this very same handle and it, or replaceable lead uh, pencil. And I think it had a clamping thing on the front where you could then write and stuff. You don't see any of them now. Oh, look, it does. Oh, it does look terrific. You get a little, look at that cone design. That looks like the lithe head from West Coast Shaving. I wonder if they saw this razor and kind of tried to reinvent the wheel. I mean, that looks just like the same angle and everything. And this truly does look new old stock. It does not look like it's been used before. The, I did have a hesitancy with this one because of the plastic handle. And sure enough, look, the center of gravity is way over right here so it's a very it's going to be a, a head focused but it doesn't really feel too bad and of course i've got excellent grip with all these ridges i've enjoyed the shave on several of my gibbs razors and i do have another razor that has the plus and the minus and i enjoy the minus more the plus is a little bit more aggressive uh, and so if this is similar then i think this will be worth the money because this will last for a very very long time and here's the special thing about this razor and here's why i bought it there are other gibbs out there that i don't have that i don't buy here's the deal well that disassembled in a way i totally didn't see coming i did not expect the head to come out and look the uh the handle like a two-piece razor, it looks like it's affixed to the plastic, uh, I mean, to the base plate there. So it looks like it was not designed. Maybe there's something I could do to take it apart, but I'm not going to try. I definitely want to do research on that if I ever wanted to try to disassemble it, but I don't really see a need to. Any of you Gibbs aficionados probably already know and can already see the difference in this razor and like the Gibbs 15 and 17 and the other plus and minus that I might have. You can see it from the end. This razor, and this time I'm gonna be careful. See, it looked like it was gonna separate right here, but then that's when the top popped off. <laughs> I didn't expect it. Okay, here's the deal. All the other Gibbs razors that I'm aware of, and this was told in the article on eBay, that this is the only one that can use standard DE blades. Because all the other Gibbs razors have a little post on each end of the base plate, and therefore have a little notch on each end of the top cap. And that let you use only proprietary Gibbs blades or blades that you had modified yourself in their razors. This one, as far as I can so far find, is the only one that will fit a normal DE blade because it doesn't have those posts. And so it's going to use these guys here for alignment and probably work just fine. So uh, quality looks good. 
the other Gibbs razors that I have are stainless. And so I would imagine this one also is uh, stainless too, but I'm not going to guarantee that. There are some markings under here that, uh, you know, that weren't buffed out or whatever, um, especially around the edges of these holes of these slots. But in general, looks very good. I'm going to look forward to, to shaving with that guy. Uh, boy, that adjustable, I think it's the number 17 that I have from Gibbs, is so smooth. It's wonderful. So, we'll see how this guy shaves as well. So, this is a new old stock. Number 13. And if you see this video and are interested, jump on eBay and get the other one. And it's it came from Macau. Now, is that going to fit in there? Right? Okay. It came from Macau, and it did get to me, safe and sound. It was packed well, at least mine was. I'm going to have to get that translated to French, or I'm going to have to see if my French in high school, that's from high school, is good enough to translate it. Ah, yeah, Razor Universal. And then two, two coupes, uh, probably two cuts, you know, for the plus and the minus, two different settings is probably what that is. So, wow. Um, so like I said, it's such a relief to get this stuff uh, because I had, I was looking at these confirmations. As a matter of fact, I believe it was just yesterday where I decided I need to take all these tracking numbers and write them down because I need to go to the post office and have these people look for these items because they are very much delayed. Now I was prepared to just say, hey, are you guys just really backed up? And, and this thing says it's been here for two weeks now. Is it possible that you just haven't gotten to it yet? You know, I like to have a good attitude in terms of customer service because in so many cases, they're doing the best job they can. COVID isn't helping. And so it wasn't like I was gonna go over there and be angry at all. I was just going to say, is there anything we could do? Can you search on your end using the tracking number? You know, all that sort of stuff. But instead, I took the piece of paper they had put in my box. And the lady said, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> she went back and I was just expecting two packages or something. And lo and behold, the waterfall came down. And all these packages, all these things that you see now were available. And now, you know what? This whole time I've been enjoying my scent of the Admiral as I've been uh, moving my hands around because it's on my, my hand. So nice. Um, and the Refined Shave provided these uh, two samples for me. Very kind of him to do that. And both of these are soaps that I, I haven't tried. I don't think I've tried First Line. I may have, but I really don't think so. And I know I haven't tried this one. I can't remember what FCS stands for. Um, Fulton something maybe I can't remember uh, but and but notorious um, and then there was there was a couple of uh, a couple of other soaps from FCS I believe that that had uh, one that was the word MF and I think it was a tilt to pulp fiction because it had a big old 45 caliber handgun on the front and and uh, kind of a uh, Samuel L. Jackson kind of vibe to it and I didn't really feel like trying to say that word on, on air and, and that kind of stuff. I, I just, I mean, some, I, do, I do cuss sometimes just to be funny, but my personal belief is I don't do it unless I'm being funny. Uh, I never want to say it if I'm at all serious or it could be construed as being serious. You know, I do say dang it and crap like that all the time, but I do keep my uh, cussing under control. Everybody's got to draw the line somewhere, and I just feel like that's that's right for me at least. So uh, I, I just went squeezed through these two right here and I believe I've gone in detail over everything because I mean it's not like you need me to talk about the blades right. Uh, so this uh, 1912 gem says Brooklyn New York made in USA. It's basically open comb because your your hair is now your Skin is never going to touch that solid bar at the very bottom on the underside of the curl. 
But do you see the angle here? It's a little concave. And I was watching a video by HD Shaves, and he was saying that some of these 1912 heads, you can see this one's not concave. There were some that were faceted, there were some that were straight and flat, and there were some that were concave like this. And he got different shaves from different ones. And I have several of these because they are kind of cheap. And if you want to get on eBay, you can get a ton of these for very cheap. Uh, at least some of the general models. There are some rare ones out there. But I don't have one that's concave. And he, uh, he uh, sold it to me. And I'm looking forward to using that. And I, I like these little handles too. They've got a lot of weight and gravitas to them. I don't have one like this. And I don't have the one that's the, I believe this is the Art Deco style here. And I don't have one that's, that's that style either. And you can unscrew them and switch them out in case you like one style with another razor. So I'm looking forward to trying both of these out. This is the one I bought. And I want to try out that convex. And then this is when he said, hey, listen, here's another one to try out. I'm just going to give it to you. And, and how generous is he? And that worked out that it's the Art Deco that I had kind of been wanting to, wanting to see. So very cool of him. He, he knows a lot more than I do about the single edge razors. Uh, and so if you ever want to jump on his channel, you can definitely see some, some of the single edges being used and ask him questions and he's going to know. Uh, over on the Wet Shaving subreddit, we also got a few guys who do use the SEs and, and know a lot as well there. Uh, and so if you're curious, then those are the authoritative uh, folks and not me. I can tell you what limited experience I have, but that's just what it's going to be. And here's a little extra bonus footage. Something else that came in the mail. I wanted some bandanas. I've got a couple inherited down from my father back when he would go to the store and you'd buy a bandana and it was a quality bandana back in the 50s. And, and then he would, keep, he would have those his whole life. Maybe the 70s, you know, maybe later on in life he bought some too. I don't know that he always had the ones that he had when he was young, but, but they were quality and they've been through so many washes by now that they feel just great. And when you go to Walmart now or lots of online places, uh, you can just look at the fabric and see right through it. And it's just, you know, really thin. And so I... I just saw those same thin ones everywhere. Now these are made in the USA. I got these from an Etsy vendor. Uh, they looked and they, they got good reviews in terms of people saying specifically what I kind of wanted to read, that the, uh, the quality was better than those other ones out there. Uh, now when I do unfold them, they are a little thin. You can kind of see the white door behind me a little bit but they are thicker than the ones I recently felt at Walmart. They are 100% cotton, uh, have a hank, uh, is this particular copyright here. I guess that's maybe the design, uh, and it is 100% cotton. So um, I'm interested to see, after I wash this, these a bunch of times, what, uh, what kind of feel I get. Um, not really, I, did, I didn't get them because of, you know, COVID mask. But, I mean, maybe I'll use them for that purpose. Uh, I got them for just regular cleaning of my glasses. I wanted 100% cotton for that. Um, so, uh, and it's just good to always have some uh, handkerchiefs. And so, I will, I might keep you updated once I put these through a bunch of washes and, and just see how the fabric changes over time uh, to see if they become like the, the handkerchiefs of yore. I'm curious too. Well, there we go. Um, some of that stuff you're going to see in the future. In a few days, the lather games will start. And I guess, uh, yeah, yeah, it's possible you could see all this stuff because most of this is hardware. And the hardware doesn't matter as much. You can repeat hardware during the lather games if you want. There is a point if you use um, a different razor every day, a different brush every day, that sort of thing. But um, uh, but I might be able to, uh, use these samples before I have to use, um, before I have to start the lather games, but there is a day in the lather games where you use a soap 
company that you've never used before. And these, one of these guys might be exactly what is needed for that day because I haven't used either one. Uh, let's take a quick scent. Del Mar Boulevard. Uh, what is that? Is that a, uh, in, in some kind of musical city? I did a little bit of research on this. I don't know if it's New Orleans or Memphis or, you know, St. Louis. I think it was with, with the blues. Um, I can't remember. That's enjoyable. I like that. There were some notes in the scent description that if they were a little too strong, they could cause it to be something I did not enjoy. But then there were a bunch of other notes in there that I would enjoy. And so that's why I requested uh, a sample of this one. Um, and I, I wouldn't mind if I like it, then maybe look out for it in the full tub, you know, because I don't have anything from First Line Shave. Uh, and then FCS, Notorious, Notorious. That's warmer, maybe a hint of vanilla or something like that. Got a little bit of spice to it. Not really able to pick up too much at the moment, but that, that does smell nice as well. I bet I'll enjoy shaving with either one of those. Um, you know, what's, what's trouble is that I don't have a lot of spring and summer scents, florals, that sort of thing, because that's just not a, a genre that I like. However, I do keep, so far at least, about every sample of the soap that I've ever tried. When I get little things like this, I'll use it once or twice and I'll set it aside. And so I should be able to find, I've got a dislike barrel uh, tub thing. And I should be able to look through the dislikes and have my choice of florals to use for that first day of the lather games. Well, there we go. I oh, Man, I'm enjoying Admiral. Nice. And uh, looking forward to just this gear. Um, I hope there's some stuff in here that that sounds cool to you. If you were, uh, you have a history lesson with the Gibbs 13 there, uh, and just uh, letting you know if you wanted one, it, one might still be available on eBay. Uh, and the guy did have hundreds of likes, hundreds of uh, uh, upvotes, you know, I can't remember the word for it, positive reviews, positive feedback. Um, he did have a lot there, so that's good. That's something I always look for. Oh, and then the knowledge that walmart.com has a big, a bunch of late options for you. If, if, uh, and so it, it could be a, uh, a good source for you to compare prices. Now they don't actually come from Walmart. It looks like Walmart is, uh, has contracted out with some smaller companies that have these products. And so maybe Walmart is acting as the umbrella, almost like Amazon sometimes. Maybe Walmart trying to grow themselves up into something like that. And, uh, and so it, but they, I mean, they look, I mean, they look legit. I don't think Walmart's going to tolerate some uh, counterfeit blades, some counterfeit products with their retailers, with their little subs, right? All right. Well, all the best to you guys. And we'll look forward to using this stuff in the days to come. And, uh, and I wish you the best. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. Take care.